ladies and gentlemen good evening this is tashruk kamal from army ipa business and leadership club and i am your host for today army ipa business and leadership club presents coffee with maestro season 2 well up after uh, last year's success with coffee with maestros where we talked about how we should choose our careers properly uh, i am back and army ipa business and leadership club is back with the second season we are here we are going to talk about different various industries and how do they work and to help us and to guide us we are bringing out our maestros again so today our career and our topic is about this thing so uh, today we have here with us our maestro and with that being said it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our maestro today so with that being said my i would like to say and introduce our uh, maestro is none other than ariful bashar bhaiya digital head and group account director at great dhaka so i would like to switch the floor to bhaiya hello everyone thanks for having me um hello bhaiya assalamu alaikum and welcome to army idea business and leadership and scopus maestros season 2.0 thanks thank you for having me here Well, you're cutting a bit, Mashur. You're cutting a bit. Um, well, the connection type is a little short, so I cannot hear you properly. Any check? Take a check, na kun. So, Bhaiya, uh, sorry yes. for the technical glitches. We're trying to improve the audio as soon as possible. So, can you hear me now? You're breaking, but I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. So, Maya, how are you doing? And I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Difficult time, but then again, we are all surviving. That's the best part. That's great. Well, so in Coffee with Maestros two point oh, we are going to talk about our industry. and i believe that our maestro will help us to enlighten about it and what not so uh, today we have loads and loads of questions <laughs> from our end and our maestro will definitely help us to enlighten and, and get the knowledge about it. well so i would like to request everybody to share this live with everyone who might be interested in the topic and also uh, who might feel a little good about to see The maestro and the host talking about the industry. Well, this amazing honor for everyone of us to have Bhaiya here with us. So, with that being said, Bhaiya, I would like to ask some question. So, here is the first question from my and from us. So, Bhaiya, we um, have talked about a lot in marketing, advertisement, and all the things have come in different ways. So, what do you think that uh, the marketing and advertisement is the difference? I mean, what is the difference, core difference between them, advertisement and marketing? What do you mean by them, or what are your definition of advertisement and marketing? Okay, so marketing and the difference between marketing and advertising is a very age-old question, right? It's a very confusing one as well. Um, so. advertising is basically a part of marketing right so marketing is the overall uh, department that works uh, towards promoting a product or a service it comes up with a lot of um, uh, it's it basically starts from finding a demand for a product and then making sure that product has its own usp that you can market right that's where marketing comes from so it can be a product it can be a service it can be anything um, so the difference between marketing and advertising it advertising is the last stage of marketing or you can say it can come back and forth over and over again advertising what basically does is if you want to market something then you advertise or you communicate right so when people get confused because people think that advertising is marketing which is to some extent true because it's one of the part of marketing but advertising overall is not full marketing for example it, just to clarify um, uh, for example i mean um, if i start if i want to market rice right 
So um, we are seeing a lot of packaged mar uh, package market uh, rices in the market right now. Bivino brands ni as to say. So a packed uh, rice is gula case. So I know that there is a um, there is a particular demand or there is a segment in the market. Jada Ashule, Akon, they don't want to purchase um, open rice anymore. Because there can be hygiene issues, there can be sourcing issues, there can be a lot of mix mixtures in them, you know, a lot of reasons. So, for example, and a and a renowned ABC uh, group of industries have decided now they are gonna go into the uh, rice sector as well, and they will be uh, marketing their product or they will be offering their uh, rice rice there in the market as well in modern trade in shop no in um, in in, in chalda in online so. The demand identification has been done. Marketing begins exactly from that from from that moment in time. Okay, that there is a demand in the market. We need we will be um, uh, distributing packaged packed rice to modern trade. Marketing begins. Marketing starts doing its research. Marketing um, uh, prepares the SKUs or the package sizes as well. They define the USPs also. Market kiki offering that's a competitor kiki kot to say, Amade kiki kora uchit. And Jokon, everything has been done and ready. Distribution channel is ready. Then they talk to their agency, be it an advertising agency or their in house agency, and they tell, Okay, I have a, I have a brand, I have, a, I am, I'm planning to launch a rice brand. Um, can you advertise for us, right? So then it comes to agencies like us, Great Hakka, or other other few agencies that we have in Bangladesh. Then they prepare, okay. But then they ask the first question: What is your what is your USP? Where are the distributions available? Where is demand? And then we prepare the communication, advertising communication that you see uh, online or in TV or when you go to a trade fair, you see the posters, POSM materials, all these, right? But then again, so advertising is coming to the agency and then we are doing it. Um, I prefer to say that agencies are the cream of marketing because they do the most exciting work, which is visible to the audiences. But the marketing has, overall has so many other channels that um, advertising is the most exciting part because that's where we communicate. So that's the overall difference, if, uh, if I could make it, make, make it clear to all of you, yes. Thank you for the clear distinctions between them, or my sir. So uh, we were ha initially having some um, glitches on the network. So with that being said, I would like to switch to another device if uh, you allow. Me. Please, please. So yes. All clear now. It's like having yes, two that's Tashur. That's right. <laughs> but I'm back again and at you to get back getting back to hosting. So yeah, the, I think I think uh, that clearly uh, defines that distinguishes the two 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 uh, exclusive terminologies that we have: marketing and advertising, which I, which I explained through the rice story. So yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, that's great. I, the, initially, we were having some sort of things, but, you know, like, from my perspective, I was, like, considering the things, you know, like, the things that you have explained and things that are very much clear to me now. And I believe to everyone who are watching has got a clear distinction between them. You know, initially, I was also confused about it. Okay, so marketing and advertisement looks or sounds very similar. But you see that click when you hear the maestro is right here. So moving to the next question, you know. So, uh, you know that um, there are a lot of marketing possibilities and things that we can do. So, from your end or to your definition, what is the core goal of marketing? I mean, visibility, sending message, uh, conversation. There are a lot. So, what is yeah. your uh, ideal um, perspective of it? See, uh, the objective of marketing keeps on evolving, right? So, um, for example, if you are a 
new brand, if you are offering a new product, the objective of marketing at the very beginning is always sales. But you, because you are putting, you're burning money. You're burning money um, in uh, uh, trying to communicate, trying to advertise, trying to hire all these people who can come and contribute to your product or service. So it's sales. But the more you grow, the more you want to um, spread into newer sectors, then it becomes sales is always constant. Sales, sales will always be a marketing objective, right? Why we're actually doing all the stuff because that brings in money. So just like the way you said marketing and advertising actually overlaps sometimes in Bangladesh, sales and marketing also overlaps at times because people cannot distinguish themselves because what, what is what and what where am I joining? Um, so in at the very beginning and at the very core, sales would always be one of the major objective of doing all the communication or marketing activities. You can evolve, businesses evolve, then there can be a communication where CSR comes into play, corporate social responsibility becomes very important because the brand has grown. Now that brand um, is obligated to do something for the society. A, a campaign, uh, they might introduce a new product or a service to the market. Then it becomes, a uh, marketing objective becomes, okay, we have to make sure that awareness is there. People understand what we are trying to communicate. They, can, they want to reach to as many as, as people as possible because they have just came into uh, the digital landscape, right? So they were not, um, the, the, they were not previously a, uh, a digital friendly organization, but now they are. Now that they are, they want to reach a lot of people and let them know that, guess what? Um, say, for example, I'm Unilever, but I have also, a, I have also opened a new frontier called U-Shop, for example, or Food Panda, trying to reach a lot of people through all their communication everywhere. So ma marketing doesn't have a defined objective that, okay, this, this, is, this will be the objective forever, but it can always evolve just like the brand does. Well, great to hear that. Uh, so I would like to say at this point that you are watching Coffee with Maestro season two, and we have Bhaiya with us telling us a lot of information about the industry and all. So I would like to request everyone who's watching, share this live with your friends and family who might be interested in. And don't forget to comment your questions, and we, our Maestro will be glad to answer that. So uh, here, you know that, with you being said that you know the marketing is evolving and everything is evolving so the world is needing a lot of different things as time has demanded so the, everything is in, evolving into its own self and own value so sales you know there are a lot of aspects that we hear these days like sales digital marketing um, strategy script writing so there are a lot of segments in the industry that we hear or uh, professions that are getting introduced day by day. So which segment has the most demand in the industry? As I have mentioned that there are sales, there are digital marketing, strategy, script writing. So Bhaiya, I would like to ask you that which segment is the most to demand? Or what do you think about it? See, advertising uh, in general has a very core uh, defined departments, right? So there is... Um, there is art, which is the graphic designing part of it, which is the creative end. Then you have copy. Then you have copy. you have strategy and servicing. So in general, advertising overall in whichever country you go to, it has been and it will always be these four major segments which advertising has begun with. But as we are diving into the world of digital we are seeing a lot of sectors being opening as well for example in the next five years data scientist um, data analyst or online digital strategist e-commerce strategies all these segments will um, will pop up and we will we will be taking uh, the lead role as well but then and then again advertising at the core the the four segments that have uh, department that i've mentioned art copy servicing and strategy, these are equally important. So you cannot actually leave one behind and say, okay, no, 
um, I'm not a good graf uh, good graphics de designer. I should I should not think about advertising in general. But guess what? Graphic designing is one um, uh, such department, a uh, subsection of an advertising agency, um, uh, rather than the full um, the uh, full uh, the, the the other three departments or other four or five departments that we currently have. Um, maybe you can pursue something else. Maybe you are a very you are a, you are very um, uh, good in communication with people, right? And uh, maybe you can think a little differently. Um, maybe you can observe better. Look, strategy is a better fit for you. If you uh, can communicate with um, people in general, maybe servicing is something you can pursue. If you can um, uh, write, if you can think and write in a different manner, maybe copywriting is something where you'll be a better fit. We currently, we see a lot of people leading all these departments and they have they're all veterans of this country they have started 15 20 years ago and they have all reached that position where each of them is contributing to the entire marketing and advertising scenario in bangladesh say the top five agencies in bangladesh they're contributing there and none of them is less important than any other one everyone is equally important everyone is equally contributing uh, someone is contributing in the creative sector someone is contributing in the in defining the strategies for brands um, and public private companies. Someone is writing beautiful copies. Someone is designing beautiful art. Someone is uh, mining amazing data um, on digital. So it can be anything and everything as long as uh, and equally important, uh, all the sectors for sure. So uh, with your uh, answer, we say that it's all about finding your own thing right so i am better doing this or i'm better at doing that so it's all about like getting that identifying it and identifying your strength first so if i am able to find my strength then i can easily uh hit the course of time and then contribute to the industry of course for sure say there's a the, the understanding is um and it's a life understanding rather than a career or a professional understanding. It begins when you're small, small right? If you like playing cricket, you play cricket. Right. If you're a good batsman, play. be a good good batsman. It doesn't have anything to do with advertising in general, but a, um, but a, but a understanding of self that what you're good at. That's one thing. Second, that, second, second important thing, if you're good at something, doesn't mean you have to be best at it. So, for example, I, uh, uh, growing up, or maybe in, in in your level, in undergraduate level, someone is very fascinated about advertising. Um, they think they can they can contribute a lot at the first go. It's important to consider. For example, you have uh, how what is the population of Bangladesh? Is 17, 18 crore, right? Eighteen crore yes, of population. Yes. Uh, for example, eighteen crore population, uh, and you want to pursue your career in advertising. So you have top five agencies in Bangladesh where you can work and you can brag about it, right? I mean, to your peers and say, hey, I'm working at you. I'm working you at say, for example, yeah. hey, for example, hey, for example, say, for example, say, so if these five companies all together say they have an employee count of 1,000 people, which is average in Bangladesh, average in uh, in the top five agencies, if you uh, deduct the departments, uh, finance, accounts, um, um, IT, uh, admin, then you have say 500 people or 600 people. Out of these 600 people, you have 200 people who are in, or 300 people who are in creative. You have 100 people who are um, uh, in, uh, 200, say, 200 people in servicing, and you have 100 people left who are doing both intern jobs and servicing that to some extent, serve, uh, creative. Um, the entry level creative position, entry level servicing position, and you want to be the best at it. Do you can you understand how how difficult it is to get into those 300, 200 positions? You have 18 crore people, 65 percent of the population is under the age of 35. You have 100, 200 people, and you want to break through everything, and you want to uh, uh, um, uh, put a mark in the industry. So it's important to learn. Now, at the for, because of the blessing of uh, blessing of uh, online uh, content availability or sources, the learning can begin from home, right? So 
the more you can invest your time the more you find out okay what i am good at what i am what i where i can contribute more then it's e- that becomes easier to apply in an agency where because you have you know where you can be good at they will be more prone to listening to your conversation that's very important because we come across a lot of people who have just started their say marketing or advertising career but are confused they don't know they don't know their forte it's important to know your forte so if it's important to know that okay if you are a good copywriter you can write beautiful copies right if you are a good servicing you know what's happening around all the brands if you are a good thinker or who can strategize je eta na hoy eta better hoy to jeta modhe bangali onek paradoshi because amra shob kichu theke jani better jani maybe that is something your forte but you define it you talk to us when you meet advertisers like us talk to us about those things because we remember so it's important to find your own own thing first and that's true from the beginning of life that's true for advertising as well thank you for answering ladies and gentlemen you're watching coffee with maestro season 2 career in marketing and advertisement industry we have our maestro with us so do comment your questions or any queries that you feel like having and i am going to continue the conversation with bhaiya so bhaiya uh, after the insights and the understanding that we have got from you so far that okay uh, it's about and getting your niche or getting to that particular thing that you're looking for and then diving all in so you know from my perspective as an undergraduate student i'm thinking that okay so what are the things or skill set that i should develop to get into the industry in the first place because i'm just doing or continuing with all my uh, university courses and probably i'm doing some of the uh, part time stuff but if i want to pursue uh, the into this industry my career uh, and if i really want to like get in here and become and be very much impactful so what are the skills that i should develop or start develop as i am an, an undergraduate student right now okay so let me ask you a few questions what is your major uh today i'm a sophomore so i haven't picked up a major i'm going to pick it on my final year what are the what are the majors you're planning to pick I am planning to go for um, marketing. Obviously, I love it. So you want to do major in marketing and just just marketing, right? Nothing else. You don't want to pursue dual major. Yeah. No, 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 not dual. I I would I okay. prefer focusing on a single thing at a time. So what do you like about marketing? Why do you want to do a major in marketing? Well, you see, from my end, it's like I'm more of a person so from my end i feel like that i can connect with the product and probably i can tell people the story you know from my end it's all about giving them the reason why they should buy it i mean creating that facility or giving them answer to that question that okay this is the thing and it solves the question and i was all inspired with that thing you know jordan belfort thing that go ahead and sell me this pen so all this thing is like letting people know so this is like a very bold industry where you can put your statement and that encourages me to take pick my major and maybe i can start my job there oh, great uh, that's a good start okay. let me uh, let me ask you now the second question um, have you seen documentaries related to marketing or advertising in general uh no have you looked for i cannot for say that i am a huge fan uh i have so i mostly looking at all the things you know available clips and stuff okay so the thing that is related to my study or courses and i do appreciate and enjoy things every here and now here and then here is the thing right so um yeah it begins with you right so when you attending that marketing yeah. course just like when i attended my marketing course back in say mm-hmm. 10 and 12 13 14 years ago so there is one teacher right who's teaching uh, there is this faculty who's teaching to all these 40 people right and you guys have been assigned oh, right. first um right. and you guys have assigned you guys have been assigned with a task and you are all trying to finish right. the task right at the early age now say these 40 people would for sure follow the guideline the faculty has given and complete the task right 
but they are so much beyond that task. Say, for example, why did I ask whether the second question was whether do you did you watch any documentary? If you just go and type yeah. marketing or advertising documentary on Google or on YouTube, there are two documentaries that will pop up which are very important. I'm giving you an example and I'm also trying to um, under, make you understand the process of how the persuasion can happen. Say, you're, you're going to find a documentary which has been made, say, a few decades ago. It's called Art and Copy. It's very popular. So it talks about advertising in general, the art part of it and the copy part of it. Then you're going to find a documentary which is called Project Rebrief by Google. This rebrief actually brings in the advertisers from the 70s, from the 80s, and who are alive and brief them again. That now that we leave the digital arena, in the digital world, how the communication would be. Now, why I'm telling you that, for example, if I am that faculty and I am briefing my students, I will share these two documentaries as well because in my mind, I'm thinking maybe in the class there will be one or two people. They will actually end up seeing them and they will be interested in them. So once, okay. so the, the, the moment you consume what those documentaries actually trying to portray to the newer millennials or the Gen Z's, then you, you will be more interested mm -hmm. in advertising. You have already prepared yourself. Then you, when you come and say, for example, speak to me or, 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 or my colleagues at Gray and tell them, I've seen art and copy. I've seen project TV. I was like, and I will be amazed because this is the first time someone has come to me and talked about something that I speak about. Understand the okay. difference? So it's all so about connecting, right? But how I am how I am connecting with everyone through this? You can, not everyone, because not everyone shared the same um, the same thought, right? So you don't have to connect with everyone. You have to you have to take it in for yourself. When it's not for the sake okay. of connecting into that. I didn't I didn't watch art and copy when I was in the university or maybe in my first few years in my professional career for the. Uh, for the sake of speaking to other people. No, never. I watched okay. it because I like it. I like that industry. Okay. I like that. Um, I like the, this entire concept of communication, right? So you have to like it. Be true to yourself. You don't have to please anyone. You don't have to. When mm -hmm. You will never know whether you will see me again. Um, when, I, I don't know how many people are watching it. I'm sure maybe I will not see most of them in my entire life. But that's fine. But what I want to portray is be true to yourself. Try to explore as much as much as possible. Um, there is this website called Ads of the World, right? Adsoftheworld.com. If you are, if you like advertising, if you like advertising, if you are a marketing person, go spend your time there. You spend a lot of time in YouTube anyway. Just spend five times, five minutes of your per day there and see what's happening in the world. So what happens is Ads of the World is basically an archival website where all the latest and greatest communication from the entire world, they actually archive it, they update, up, uh, update the site on an everyday basis. You have to submit your uh, uh, creative proposal, but creative contents there, and then they will verify, they will say if it's up to the mark, then they'll upload it, right? So it's very curated. So that's where you should spend time. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to say is start by feeding um, knowledge and information to yourself first, be true to yourself, then master the art. You can, of course, maybe you will not have, um, uh, uh, say, for example, real life experience of doing advertising because you are just an undergraduate. <clears throat> you have to finish, excuse me, you have to finish and then you have to apply and start practicing. But before that, you can have a lot of knowledge of what's going around, right? So you, are, you already have a lot of understanding of what goes around in the world, in the world of advertising. Then in the yeah, interview, you yeah. have a lot of conversation as well, rather than, you know, the interviewer asking you. That's great. Well, uh, it's so good to understand the perspective that you have. So it's like all about getting to it and understanding and consuming everything that's happening around me. I really love the idea, you know.
so i really love the idea so uh, bhaiya at this point of our show we actually when we uh, started spreading the forms we have some question from the from uh, google forms as well so i would like to read a question uh so for more sifat sadik and just like me he has asked that how should i prepare myself to join the hr sector of marketing and advertisement industry okay um HR sector of marketing and advertising is when uh, see for the freshers when you are a fresh graduate you don't have a lot of things in to put in your cv right so it's basically a one page cv <laughs> you can increase the font font size to keep make it two pages but at the end of the day it doesn't help <laughs> let's be honest right? um, so you can only put so much there but then again if if you if you are passionate about hr the best way to Pursue is of course to make sure that okay you you have a um, the good grade in your major, but also what happens is there are a lot of agent a lot of associations who work in HR right and who who uh, give a lot of training in HR. Why am I why this question is very relevant because I have dual major and I started with HR my major is has I have HR and marketing dual major. and i am i was extremely i was extremely passionate about hrm right i i loved everything okay. i loved reading the books i loved the faculties i loved every part of hrm right but then again i wanted to pursue marketing as well. i dual major okay like the course vision it hai why not do marketing as well then i when after my first graduate when i graduated i started you know looking for work i saw the work that hr does and the limitations of it because it's very nicely mentioned in the books but there and there are very competition competitiveness in the big organization where the full application of hr happens so that's why i later decided okay let's go into sales and marketing but then again i could have pursued hr in that way what my strength would have been i would have attended all those hr related courses that happens say Uh, there are a lot of companies who gives there is grow and excel there you can apply in grow and excel and do internship there where i did internship you can actually apply um the, attend those training courses you have you have to make sure that the resume that you're sending to that particular depart organization and to the particular department you have relevant knowledge in that sector so for example you've done training and um uh, Say training and knowledge sharing HR uh, HR HR course in your undergrad that is relevant to the HR in marketing for marketing because HR would think okay you can say for the marketing team I can have this person you can attend few seminars that happens on a regular basis on HR and you can attend them you can have collect your certificates and you can actually put them in your CV. not for the sake of putting it on the cv but for the sake of understanding it just the way you are from marketing and like i gave you example of art and copy that is the example those trainings are real life example for the hr they don't have to watch a youtube video to actually understand and be passionate about it they actually have to do ha- hands on training to make it into practice because the conversation of with hr would be different than a conversation with a advertiser just like me your and my conversation would be completely different on a uh, philosophical level to some extent but a uh, conversation with hr would be how can i make sure okay this is a new state um the new way of uh, payroll management um this is how i can maybe we can make sure that our performances our employee performance are being appraised properly um this is uh, these are the latest things in marketing and marketing for training these are the training that we can do for marketing department these training can include um, uh, digital as well because digital is uh, becoming a big player right now say for example i uh, last in, in the last one one and a half months i have done two trainings with uh, the aci aci group right where the hr has organized training for the entire marketing team and i was the speaker there so it was a very exclusive uh, two hour two day two days long training for them where i have taken them to the entire aspect of advertising how we work what we do um how do we do it what's the reason behind selling doing particular campaigns how we mine data all of it so very extensive training that we have given them i have given them uh, so that's their hr taking initiative for the marketing department hope it makes sense 
Okay, okay. I hope that uh, the person who has asked the question is watching and is getting the insights that our maestro has shared. Now, I would like to, at this point, wondering that, to, like about target markets, you know, because all about the advertisement industry, I guess we are always looking for reaching the people that we are willing to reach. I mean, if I want to sell something or let people know about something, it's all about the target market or reaching them properly. So, I, I mean, how important it is for a marketer to understand the target market and how can a student practice this before graduation? I mean, what, what can I do, like from my perspective, to understand the whole thing? See, um, it's, 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 the, it's the core of it, right? So you have a product, hmm. whom do you want to sell it to? Yes. So, right. <laughs> and you can, yes. if you are not selling and making money, you, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. Okay, I, that's important I, to understand the difference. So the yeah. hobby, when, you're, when you have a hobby, there is no calculation of profit and loss, right? So it doesn't matter anyway. But if you have a product, if you have a service, it begins with the customer in mind. Whom do I give that service to? Whom do I sell my products, right? So it's important that, okay, um, to define the target market or the target group or simply, bhai, ami amar tamar product, ami amar chetai na, ami kal So it can range from the very bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid where the SEC AA plus is. It completely depends on the product or a service you are willing to offer to the market. For example, the rice example that I've given at the, at the beginning of this um, session, maybe that, that rice company is, uh, say, competitive and they have a price range where, which, is, which are similar to the competitors. In that case, they are target target consumer or target market is maybe say SSC B. It starts from SSC B to SSC A because they are the one who can buy say rice. For example, I don't know the rice exact price of it. So if you're not if you're not aware of the target consumer, what you're gonna do is you will be taking that shai chotu taka packed rice and you'll go to you will try to sell it in say outskirt of Dhaka. Jekhane price range is in average open rice bish taka wa pochish taka. And you will be spending a lot of a lot of money, you'll be burning a lot of money in advertising, um, you will put up a lot of posters, you will do miking, you will do this and that, you will give offers to the store. After burning 15, 20 lakh, 50 lakh taka behind promoting that brand, you'd see that, okay, in, in that particular month, you've only sold 10, pa 10 packets, which is what, say, Chaishudaka. And you will okay. pull your hair and say, what's happening? I've spent so much money. What you did was, you spent so much money in the wrong place. Your target market, your target location, your target audience was not predefined. You were not aware of it and you spent money where you shouldn't have. What you should have done is, you could have easily partnered with say, the likes of Shopno, Unimart, um, um, Mina Bazaar, uh, all, all these uh, modern trade, and you could have, could have said, okay, I'm buying your shelf space, and I'm giving say, uh, a, a introductory pricing, so give me this much of shelf space. That would have sold a lot of people because a lot of people go to shop no. So a nicer packaging, a neatly written USPs would have sold a lot more than the mistake you have done because you couldn't you couldn't identify your target market or the target population properly. So as uh, at this point, you know, there are a lot of questions showering in, in the comment section. So let's read some questions from there. So Mr. Abul Kadim has said, hello, Bhaiya, can you share the thought process behind the recent Grameen phone 4G and the UCB Uniclix, uh, Uclix father-daughter OVC? I have a tendency of complex thinking. 
how can one get out of this think simply and deliver this effectively like the Grameen phone 4G and UCB UCLIC OVC. If uh, I, I cannot recall the, the particular OVCs that he's referring to, of course, because I've maybe I have, we, have, we see a lot of Grameen phone work because the, both, both the brands you mentioned, these are basically yeah. looked, looked at, we, these are actually our clients. So we have prepared the OVCs. We, uh, we do the core branding, core positioning for Grameen phone and UCB alike. But I cannot recall the, what, what, the, what the content of that OVC was. So I'm just going to keep it very um, uh, generic. We all do complex thinking. So there is, a, there is this um, amazing thing in advertising. Uh, it's for everyone to actually absorb this understanding. Um, it says, if you are in advertising, if you, are, if you have started doing advertising, and anything you're thinking is wrong. But the more time you spend doing advertising, learning advertising, spending time, building your career, you would be less wrong eventually. But you'll never be right. So advertising is something where you say, even we may, we may not be right in most of the, our campaigns, but that's fine. We, have, we are less wrong. Because we have all these people who have, say, 20, 30 years of experience. And when we combine all these experiences, we have more than 100, 200 years of experience. Together, we are less wrong. So the complex thinking you might have, the more you expose, your, expose yourself to the understanding, to this um, uh, world of advertising and communication, the more you see, the, uh, the more you learn, the, the less wrong you would be going forward. And then you would understand because you were less strong, you started giving those complex ideas as well and start, uh, started embracing the simplicity. Because an idea should not be complex because it's not humanly possible to go to 18 crore people and explain them what you thought, right? So yeah. you actually have to wow. make it simple so that a person who's from Borishal seeing Ramin phone maybe using Roby can actually embrace that thought, can, can understand that message, and maybe be a little more pushed towards switching to Grameen phone. So that's why simplicity matters. Great, great. So I hope that Mr. Nadim has got the answer. So moving on to the next comment, uh, we have questions coming in all a lot. A lot of questions are here. So the next question is, uh, Mr. Rafiul Islam Nihal has said, Bhaiya, what is the difference between working in a marketing agency and working in marketing department of a company? And what about similarities? So the differences and the similarities. Dear Maestro, please explain. OK, so uh, a marketing agency, in our understanding, from our understanding, is basically an advertising or creative agency, right? As I said at the very beginning, we do the cream work. That cream work is being that oh, we do the communication part of it mostly. So uh, say for example, if Grameen Phone gives us something that they are say for example they are planning to launch five G, for example, what the communication of five G would be, we will actually define that. We'll make sure okay, Grameen uh, we uh, we understand we keep the Grameen Phone brand positioning aligned with their five G communication. Um, what is we're doing on digital, what is we're do doing on PR, what is we're doing on modern trade, are we doing something on the uh, on ground, BTL, um, what is we are doing and we take that entire thing to say Grameen phone uh, for discussion and then their approval. <clears throat> on the other hand, for example, on the on Grameen phone on side, only actually looking at uh, the communication part of it the marketing department on Grammy phone. The communication is in just like advertising is one part of their entire task. They have a lot in their plate because it starts with understanding what are the benefits of 5G, what we need to market, what pricing we what price point we need to touch base upon, what are the support system or the ecosystem 5G would enable. With the launch of 5G, are we also marketing any other IoT product, 
if we are marketing that iot power product what will be the packaging what will be the messaging what will be the usp of those iot products so they are working with a lot of things on their plate right and advertising is one part so okay. although advertising is in included but they have a lot of things and same goes for say for example um, uh, 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 say savlon right as a brand manager working in savlon has a lot in his plate and one of that part is advertising and communication so that's the difference a marketing agency and a marketing department hey well i i was thinking about that there are a lot of different i mean you see that the ideology of something that okay the two terms are sounding pretty much similar but yet if we like discuss about it and talk about it a lot of differences come in and they are visible like you know in advertisement uh, or like i was thinking that you know finance the connection between finances and marketing here you know so since marketing and finance is interconnected so should a marketing graduate do an mba in finance will it be a wise choice that i i am doing this and then pursuing an mba on finance that's fine i but it's important you see you can do marketing and finance together or maybe bba in marketing and finance bba in marketing that's fine as well why is fine because at the end of the day you have to understand business say if you understand finance as well it becomes easier for you to make sure okay what marketing expenditures uh, needs to be financed properly or maybe then you have two forties so you have done finance as well but then they, you decided to pursue pursue your career in marketing then when you're actually talking to the other agency or maybe your creative agency or maybe you are you work in an agency but you're talking to the marketing department of a company you can speak to them in the fin, uh, finance level as well okay what sort of uh, financial budget do you have okay this is this is uh, with this budget i think we should avoid these two channels because these they will not give us the return on investment properly rather go with this channel because that's that can ensure a lot of visibility so there is no harm in that you can learn you can do marketing do your mba in marketing again but um, i don't see any harm in doing uh, learning another um, uh, another particular department which would help you understand and expose you to the other world of um the business part as well because that makes a lot more sense so it's actually opening a lot of options for me i mean it's widening the horizon for sure so if i have the knowledge of both both of the things right So we have another question coming in. So Mr. Naim Labib says, "Bhaiya, which one is more effective, internet marketing or traditional marketing, based on classic media such as TV, radio, magazines, etc." Okay. Um, so there is a misconception in the market that digital has taken over, right? It does. It 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 had, but in no way it actually less prioritized traditional marketing. because traditional marketing guess what the biggest the biggest um uh, tool that we still bangladesh still has uh, which is the television set in their home so digital has digital is actually reaching toward uh, uh, toward a lot of people they actually it, it is actually connecting a lot of people but television or traditional marketing methods are still very effective and they actually reach more people in bangladesh eventually digital will take over for sure maybe why not because that's the way the world is heading effectiveness both has its effectiveness so if i if i am a big um, conglomerate who say one of the product is say sugar and i want to market sugar and i want to market it nationwide my mix of channels would be both traditional and digital through the traditional i will make sure that my all the people in my distribution um, channels are actually all my customers are actually getting the um, the product available in the nearest store 
in through digital i will sell it uh, sell to my um, uh, modern um, uh, through my more modern trade uh, through digital sell it to dhaka uh, metro and the metros of bangladesh so it's available there to uh, digital will be used for the um, online sales as well because that has picked up you have the grocery evale grocery mina click shopno chaldal a lot of players right now right so both of them can be important but then again for example you are chaldal so let's change the perspective a bit you are chaldal.com you sell you have a distribution system within dhaka city now for chaldal there is no need for say investing a lot of money in television because television would reach out to a lot of people but chaldal is not available there so they will actually come and visit say from chitagong or silet to chaldal.com they and they will select their, their delivery address and they will see chaldal popping a message and saying we are not delivering there so it's not needed for uh, chaldal but if they spend a lot more on digital that will bring a lot of volume as well that will be converted to sales so then digital plays a major role so you have to actually choose your battle and choose your product carefully and where you need to communicate yeah i hope you got your answer mr naim so bhaiya a lot of question and answers going on and i want to like make things a little you know less serious okay so it's time to have some fun from maya i would like to take the freedom and start the rapid fire in this round i'm going to ask you some questions and it is going you're going to answer them so i am going so the first question do you intend to write a book in future i actually have plans but haven't decided when and how but i want to yes okay what qualities do you value in people with whom you spend time um what quality i think their presence yes. that's that's what matters to me the most being closer to them now this one's my favorite so what's your favorite multiplayer shooting game let's see if it matters with me i although uh, i spend a lot of time playing dota every day but battlefield that's a great i'm more of a pubg guy sad well so what's the first career you dreamed of having a kid i mean this one's the most priyatsaid dream what what i didn't understand the question can you repeat again okay okay yes yes sure the question is what's the first career you dreamed of having as a kid hmm i don't remember <laughs> uh i think i wanted to be a teacher just like everyone else because then because being from bengali medium we all have four options doctor engineers uh, teaching and i don't know the other one because i was not a science student doctor engineer you know okay. was obsolete but I, i was left with teacher and businessman <laughs> great i was i personally was like having the idea of getting into a rock star or getting into the music industry then here i am pursuing my bba degree right now Now, I knew from day one that I sucked in music, so it's fine for me. <laughs> oh, okay. So first thing, you bought with hard-earned money. What? Did they what do hard-earned money? What is the? What is the? Yeah. What is? What was the first thing you bought with hard-earned money? I mean the. Oh, one, I bought my the result. You oh, 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 yes. So when when I when I started advertising, I uh, I had a I at the say eight nine years back. I had a client who used to pay me ten thousand taka per month for the for his Facebook page management, and I I saved up for a few months, a few, and I I and I bought a MacBook Pro 2012 version, um, which is still with me, and I've actually it's actually broken now because its battery just died two months back, but I have kept it in my library shelf amongst the book as a reminder, as a as a memory to look back to. Yes. Wow, great! Like this is pretty much similar with me. You know, like from my hard-earned money, I got myself an iPhone 5s. Like I was doing some sort of side project with friends. I still have the yeah. phone running and up. 
I like it. These are so emotional, right? The things yes. that you buy with your first friend money, and such an amazing feeling that you like to carry yes. for the rest of your life. Well, yes. Well, so the next question: Will you wait for a product to be delivered from e-commerce, or walk yourself to buy it from a transitional market? depends how much how badly i want it right so if it's something say if i for example i i recently bought a gaming pc i went to the store i stayed there 5 hours stood by and i wanted that okay laga graphics card laga ram gulla eta na eta dena eta so it's a high end gaming pc that i built um i will never so, I, I, <laughs> so yeah so you can relate right so yeah. uh, so um, uh, So that's the that that how badly I wanted it. That's why I got it right away. I will never place an order for something that I badly want. But if there are less important things, for example, there are some. Uh, I just ordered another uh, wireless headphones. I know I don't need, but it was on discount, uh, and I know it's gonna come after you know say two three weeks. I'm fine with it. So that's why I just ordered it. So it's a mix of both. Okay. So, if you get the chance to choose your undergraduate major again, then what it would be? A fresh start. I think I will go into coding, uh, programming language, because I know that the future is okay, heading coding. in that direction. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the future is heading in that direction. So, uh, I don't know how much of undergrads are enthusiastic about coding and. application writing and mobile what not but that's that's something extremely exciting i find so it's it's in, it's in addition of what i do marketing and advertising but in not in replacement of maybe if i had that time in addition of hr and marketing i would have actually learned uh, the 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 world of coding and application mobile application as well Great. So, have you ever done unpaid internships? Fortunately, not. I was paid very little, um, but then again, uh, I did. I ha- and I've never done unpaid. And you, one should never do unpaid. Um, the, my my understanding of it, because you should not value yourself so less that you agree to everything. Okay. So now. I'm going to say a word, and you're going to tell me the first thing that comes in your mind after hearing that word. Okay. Okay. So the word is traveling. Family. Okay. Uh, football. Uh, with friends. chocolate diabetes <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 so as i was talking about football so let me ask you this every football club wants you in their squad so which club would you pick what a club that I would, would join and honor I go to, yeah i go, i would go to chelsea because i remember i'm not a big football I fan remember, but i used to watch the games uh, when i was you know 5 10 8 years back so i still remember the players there who were playing back then so i and mm-hmm. i used to play my fifa team as chelsea as well uh, in fifa 17 18 or i think in 16 as well 16, 17, <laughs> yeah. so that's why it's always chelsea because i'm not a big football fan and if i name something else if you ask me the names i cannot name them. okay So, uh what is better? Uh being organized or attention in, attention to details? Both. See, the problem is um uh, there 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 are a lot of saying that too yeah, much perfection creates uh, kills the in, in initiative, right? So, there can be attention mm-hmm. to details, but you have to also keep in mind when to let go. so when you're running a lot of business you have a lot of clients you you can be involved everywhere and anywhere so see that's not important that you can, so if you want to give attention to detail and if you're involved 
and spending so much time in particular one account in particular one campaign one creative content then you miss out on a lot of opportunities that you can otherwise could have attend so attention to details is important but you have to make sure uh, delegation is there as well so eventually the more you grow you build up teams as well if you can empower them if you can if you can teach them how to also have that attention to detail your attention to detail is less required then you can drive your business elsewhere you can put your mind into bigger things and give those bigger things attention to detail where the outcome would be much higher okay great oh, okay so apart from the serious things let me get back to get back to the fun part okay so ever cooked something to make someone feel special i think i cooked noodles once once or twice for my wife and she was okay with it <laughs> so yeah <laughs> because it was not that nice so yeah she was okay with it <laughs> now, now, now let's get into clothing so sure. tell me your casual casual shirt shirt cool uh jeans or chinos jeans for sure okay so sneakers or dress shoes sneakers every day i have 15 pairs all of them are very nice and expensive wow <laughs> wow, wow wow so what's your favorite brand i am getting jealous now so my, so my favorite brand you are the brand you asked yes 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 your favorite oh, so brand so i'm i'm a big fan of puma um, i have a few pumas i have uh, i think one uh, one or two nike's i have few under armor um, i'm thinking of getting one or two reeboks because they are, they have came back pretty nicely with the designs recent designs so yeah i'm a big mm. sticker head great favorite movie uh, or tv series actually i one both what movie um movie and tv is both of course recently i have watched queen's gambit loved it i watched picky blinders loved it um Love. tv uh, movie of course of course the the recent um jack snyder's that was amazing um i watch a lot of horrors as well their hush don't breathe don't listen don't listen that these series amazing so because i had i have netflix at home movie watching is a everyday affair great so uh i this is like from my core of the heart who's your fa- favorite character on peaky blinders and of course why? of course your, yeah Do you, you do when I do 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 I even have to define why that hero is the favorite character? Of course he is, because the person he brings to the table, right? He, he, it's, it revolves around him. How how actually he started? And of course the end of it as well. Started from the bottom and rising to the top. Yes. Thomas yes. Shelby is the favorite character of our maestro. memo job experience till now share with us please your favorite like memorable experience from your job or your workplace uh i think uh, the the although i mean um, i spend a lot of time in strategy and servicing i have a, a knack for uh, creative ideations as well and uh, one of uh, one of my campaign was that i did for brack nursery back in the days it was called nursery on wheels so i actually thought of it and um, it was it was a weekend and I, i thought of it early in the morning and i made uh, a call to the to my then managing director after rocket sir bhai i told him sir bhai thought of this what do you think um, and yeah, then he said it's great nursery on wheels what do you want to do i said i want to um the plant nursery on moving passenger bus and then run it everywhere in dhaka city just to make a point that now people complain about not having enough space for gardening 
now that uh, we have a lot of gardening but back then it was completely different uh, five eight years back then okay uh, if, if we can show you nursery on a moving passenger bus mm -hmm. why is your top or balcony empty what is your excuse for that so it was uh, ideated it was thought through but we have the client but then he said why don't you do one thing if you are very if you believe in this just go to few um, uh, nurseries and talk to them and I, we, I actually went to BRAC, approached BRAC, and BRAC has a very small nursery operation, so they actually couldn't decide they have to take permission from their main office. We went to main office with the entire 3D sketch, with the entire plan, and with a budget of how cheaply we can do it. And they took seven or eight days, and they actually gave us approval. And we ran it, we did the campaign, it was amazing. It was, on, uh, it was planted on two passenger Torongo Plus bus, it, uh, they were broken Bangladeshi bus, you know, Etikudikte Mara, Kono Light Week Night. Talmachkan, there are two beautiful <laughs> nurseries on top of it, and they're moving um, in two routes from Bishuro to uh, Motijil and from uh, Ajimpur to Mirpur. These two routes they were moving uh, for, for three days, and a lot of people actually took picture um, and uploaded it online up to, and tagged Black Nursery. Um, of course, they didn't know us because we were very small at the very beginning of our. Uh, first startup of advertising in advertising so but th that was a very good memory because i could actually see um, um, uh, the power of idea coming to life if you pursue them so that was the first example and i still till date i still pursue them uh, to, to the core of my heart and i believe that ideas can change yes that's great so, uh, Bhaiya, I would like to ask you this, that what makes your day perfect? I mean, that the things or that one thing that at the end of the day you say, okay, I have had an amazing day today. Okay. I, I, I share it with my um, team at Gray on a regular basis that I start very early. So, I, I'm, I think I'm one of the uh, first few people to enter Gray. I start early and I finish early as well. So I'm out of the office within 637. But what I try to make sure is in that particular time, I'm not distracted. I have a lot of things to take care. I, when I start early, I have nothing in my mind. I have, I'm, I have so all the important tasks that I have, I finish them early. Then I get into team tasks and I complete the day with a, with a lot of tasks. So when I come back home, I spend time with my family and I go to sleep early. At the time of going to sleep early, I have this realization that I'm going to have a sound sleep today. Because all my energy has been properly burned, both in office and with my family as well. So it's a beautiful day, beautiful end to a day, the way I wanted it to be. So then I sleep early and then I sleep peacefully and wake up again early. So that's my definition of a very productive Peaceful day. Wow. I mean, day spent well. For sure. That sort of feeling. Yes. Okay, let's get to the comment section. Let's get back to the comment. Rafi Islam Nihal, again, is very much interested to ask you another question. So let us say it. So Mr. Rafi Islam Nihal has asked you this, that Bhaiya, we have seen a lot of TVC and OVC from companies that delivering social awareness, but sometimes in whole ad, they didn't mention their product or service, not even alluded their brand look. What could be the reason behind this? And how is it effective for a company making a TVC or OBC without mentioning their brand gestures? I'm not sure which one is a lot of TVCs. I cannot recall. I don't know why that there are a lot of TVCs with brand messaging, but not mention of the company. Um, either it can be uh, uh, run by the NGOs. I, I think if he, he gave some examples, it would have made sense if he later found out which company it was. But in general, uh, of course, you have you can have a, um, a social messaging messaging given in, in your content, be it TVC or OVC, whichever format. But what we try to keep in mind that okay, there is at the very end there is a brand logo. There is, because, for example, if you are making a social awareness content, 
spending 30, 25-30 lakh taka to make a very good content, but, but you don't explain who it belongs to, what's the point of it? It can be a social awareness because you have to keep in mind, mm -hmm. you are not only spending 25 lakh taka to make that video, you're also spending one crore taka promoting or running the video on different, different channels. So I don't if if I if I example he has if he can give an example that could make uh, I can maybe relate better or maybe co can come from a different angle where he's coming from. But from our understanding, when we do social awareness mm -hmm. campaigns, of course we do a lot of them as well. But we try to keep a brand messaging intact so that people can relate. Okay, this is from Grammy phone or maybe um, this is from a partner campaign that they're running. So yeah. Yeah. I hope that answers the question, Mr. Nihal. Now, another question from Mr. Azmine bin Rashid. So, Bhaiya, do you think that online marketing would be as effective as it is right now after the pandemic? It will be more effective in one sentence. Because, see, for something to work, um, you for at least especially on uh, online, you need a lot of data. So what pandemic has hmm. forced us to do uh, Pandemic has forced us to be uh, be digitalized. Pandemic has forced mm -hmm. us to come to StreamYard and live stream and do live sessions. It forced mm -hmm. us to you know go to Chaldal and place orders. It forced us to you know um, register for vaccine. Now you have a lot of data. Mm -hmm. That means you know that okay, I didn't mm -hmm. you didn't have enough information. How many people are um, uh, online and actually using the internet, using internet as a service. Now you know. So the pandemic has actually resulted in that shift, which was needed. Maybe it would have eventually come after five, eight years, but it actually forced us and made us sure that we adapt as fast as possible. And even after the pandemic, this would continue. Online would be much more powerful because online has a lot of data right now which traditional and other traditional media doesn't have i hope you got your answer okay so uh we have another question uh from the google form okay so let me uh read it out for you roger uh, nikotem barui from brack university has asked the question that how did the marketing strategies change during the pandemic? Oh, it's an interesting question. It has changed drastically. So um, a company who used to, you know, um, who were who were considering all the traditional channels, say, running uh, trade, pro trade promotions, uh, organizing events and activities, where they were used to with it and they actually embrace it because they could see a good return from those particular from methods of organizing. When all of those got yeah. shut down, the only channel that was available for marketing, for communication and advertising was digital. So it actually pushed them um, right. uh, to pursue, to consider. And just like the previous question, uh, maybe a, a few companies were considering ch having their products on child dal. They don't consider anymore. They have their products on child dal. So, say for example, uh, the, a lot of e-commerce have uh, uh, actually they have opened this in this in this particular one one and a half years time where um, a lot of their products are online right now. They're giving services. You are seeing telemedicine. You are selling uh, seeing companies uh, or uh, brands like Digital Hospital opening up, Prava Health taking over. But before the pandemic, where were they? Now everyone know them, right? So I think that's the power of digital. That's the power of pan that's what the pandemic has um, uh, caused caused us. It made sure that okay, digital is in play right now. It would have you know, come anyway within the next two three years, but it actually made it sure that it came earlier. Okay, uh, so Mr. Roger, I hope you're watching, and I believe that you got your answer. Well, I have another question. You know, like. What is the, okay, so we have another question from Sakibul Hawk from the comment section. So let me read it out for you. So he has said that by apart from academics, what skills should marketing grads build during university for the professional life ahead? 
again, marketing can go into multiple directions, right? As I said, marketing overlaps with advertising, yeah. marketing overlaps with sales, uh, marketing can overlap with uh, other telecommunication services as well. Decide which sort of marketing career you want to pursue. That's number one. If you go through the job responsibility, so you have to be very analytical and critical. These are now considered basic to me because I've spent so much time doing both ends. But then again, if you are a fresh graduate or you are just studying, if you read a job responsibility, the job responsibility of say by visiting bdjobs.com, you can see what are the tasks you will be doing. So you are not limited to your marketing academics only anymore. You don't have to take the faculties word by word for it. You don't have to consider everything. Okay, he's whatever he's teaching, that's the base of it. But what would be required in your life ahead is the task that you need to learn now. So even if you go to say bdjobs.com and look for a position, say marketing executive, sales executive, the assistant manager, branding, assistant manager, communication, and go to the job responsibility, and then you can read and understand or do you already do you, do you understand what it requires i don't know why people are confused because it's there it's out there but i don't know but if you just go to hr section of bd jobs you can see what's required from hr if you go to a section of say pharmacy you can see what's required from pharmacy you can see what's required from accounts finance it's all there so the moment you see what's required prepare yourself accordingly start preparing of course you will not be right because of course I'm gonna, people like us will not be spending every day with you or they will not hire you on the first go but at least you will have enough information so that when you're interviewing you are not when you are already apart from all the other candidates who are in, who are participating as well I believe that you have got your answer. Well, at this point of the show, everyone who's watching, I have a very great news for you. And that is a quiz from our end. I believe that everyone has watched the show properly and they've got a clear understanding of everything. So now I'm going to ask a question. And the first person, I repeat, the first person who answers it correctly will get an amazing prize from our club. So here is the question. According to Ariful Vashar Bhaiya, what should be the objective of marketing at the very beginning? I repeat, according to Ariful Vashar Bhaiya, what should be the objective of marketing at the very beginning? Please write in the comment section on the first person who answers this question gets a prize and we will let know from our official Facebook page. So the comments are rushing. Okay. okay. We are getting some feedback. So yes, do comment and I believe that maybe you are going to win. Who knows? So well, Bhaiya, back to you. Yes. So, uh, sadly, we are uh, almost at the end of our show. So, you know, like, from my perspective and from, I believe, everyone who's watching, they have this um, ideology that, okay, some amazing time spent with Bhaiya. So, would you like to give any advice to the undergrads who are focusing to build their career in marketing and advertising? What would be your advice for us? So, um... This is something I read a lot um, a while back, and I still believe it's uh, it's in practice. That if you want to be good at something, spend ten thousand hours behind it. If you want to be a musician, mm. spend ten thousand hours learning music. If you want to be a footballer, then spend ten thousand hours. If you want to be a marketer, you can wait for the opportunity to come and start to ten thousand hours. Or you could start from your university life where you have a lot of hours and make sure that that compound hours actually reaches 10,000 at the time. Um, maybe it goes to 3,000 or 4,000 by the time you're interviewing for your first job in marketing or advertising. Make that 10,000 hours count. 
So it's almost a, next year going to be almost a decade of me uh, working in my professional career, and ninety eight per ninety six nine seven percent time of that is invested in advertising. So my ten thousand hour has been while long gone. I've completed it. I have ten thousand more hours to go for something new, keeping digital intact. So that's um, that is that is my advice to you would be start your ten thousand hours right away. So that by the time you reach your one thousand five hundred or two thousand hours, you're facing your first interview. Thank you, thank you for your piece of advice. Uh, and I believe that people who are willing to pursue the career or any career, I guess this goes for everything. Like spend your ten thousand hours wisely. And I guess that will be fortified later on in the career. So, Haya, uh, so we are in the very end of the show. So I would like to say that thank you very much, and I am expressing my gratitude for coming into the show. And so we would like to say goodbye to the audience. Or yes, yes. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it take when I, of course it takes a little bit of knack to come and attend this sort of uh, session. If you don't have a knack for it, you wouldn't be here for such long. Those who started at the very beginning and till stayed till the till the till this end, thank you. Um, uh, Keep feeding this demon that you have inside, right? The demon who wants to learn, the demons who wants to pursue. Um, does that demon one day would be something good? And once you have enough information within yourself, you can turn it into anything and everything. So this nag of yours, <clears throat> pursue it. And um, uh, I, I again, uh, thank you so much for coming. And I want to thank, of course. The business and leadership club for organizing such events because I, I every single time I come at, come across this thing, uh, these sort of sessions I always appreciate the effort that's put behind. Right? Why would few youngsters would take a few hours of their time and do or arrange something like this? So that's something very credible. Thank you so much to Tashuk, you, Nilo, and the entire team that you, you guys are doing such a marvelous job. Keep doing it. Evolve yourself. Next year, along with BLC, maybe we can see some other things as well on a regular basis. So evolve. The more you evolve, the more you expose yourself to learning as well, just like your audiences, and that contributes. So that's all from my end. Thank you so much. Hope to see you guys again. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Army IBA Business and Leadership presents Coffee with Maestro. What an amazing session and what an amazing show today. Well, with that being said, this is Tashrut Kamal, your host, signing out for today. Please stay safe, stay home, and connect with everyone around you. Tell everyone to be safe, and I hope that today's learning will fortify uh, tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, for joining in, and I will see you on the next show.